Hi students. So from this episode, I'll be starting a series on nutrition that will cover the competency number eight. All right. So what all the top what all topics are going to be covered? You can see over here. This is the MCI competency list for first professional MBBS. And in competency eight point one, it says components and explanation of dietary fiber. It is followed by PEM. Thereafter, optimal health advice for disease condition like diabetes mellitus, coronary artery disease, pregnancy, etc. Obesity and various, lastly, various important product of diet and their roles. In this lecture, we'll be covering briefly competency number eight point one and eight point five. All right, so this will be just an overview. And most of the things you have already done in your plus two courses, right? So we will right away start with calorific value. So what is calorific value? Most of you already know. It is the heat required to raise a temperature of one gram of water through one degree centigrade. All right. But this is actually defined in CGS unit because calorie is actually CGS unit. All right. The SI unit is joule, and this is actually a very small value compared with respect to our biochemical environment in our body. So everywhere with respect to nutrition, we use one thousand times of this value, that is kilocalorie. All right. Now, how kilocalorie is calculated for various products? We already know the device of choice is bomb calorie meter. So this is how a bomb calorie meter looks like. Uh, this is a the one is combustion chamber in which the substance of interest is actually burnt using electrodes. This is a stirrer. This is the outer magnetic field through which this stirrer is stirred. This is the combustion chamber. This is the reader. So these are all parts of a bomb calorie meter. You don't need to know. This is just for your interest. And the calorific value of nutrients are also known as energy. Density. All right. So moving on, the first important part that will be asked in Viva is RQ. What is respiratory quotient? So this is just a ratio, which is defined as the volume of CO2 produced in liter per gram to the oxygen consumed in per liter per gram. All right. So ratio of CO2 produced is to the oxygen consumed. What is the importance of this? This is this actually. Uh, signifies what type of diet or our nutritional state is. So higher the calorie RQ, we are in an overfed state, and lower the RQ, we are in an underfed state. All right. So RQ of carbohydrate is one, RQ of fat is zero point seven, and protein is in between them zero point eight. Remember, in mixed diet, which consists of all protein, carbohydrate, and fat. The value has to be in between them, 0.7 to 0.1.0. All right, which is approximately 0.82 to 0.85. Now you already know PSMF diet, protein sparing, moderate fasting diet, and keto diet that all figure conscious models are practicing nowadays. They actually lower the RQ. So in case of keto rich diet, when keto Lysis is very active. The RQ is lower. It signifies fat destruction. Okay, carbs are absolutely cut down in weight losing diets. All right, those athletes who want to get gain lean body mass for cuts before a modeling shootout, those cases the keto diet, the RQ is absolutely lowered. Now there is a disease condition in which RQ will be lowered. That is diabetes mellitus. Why? Because the utilization of carbohydrate is very very low although carbohydrate is present but the due to insulin resistance the utilization is low and hence rq falls now what is basal metabolic rate <laughs> you already know what is bmr it is the energy that is required by an awake individual during physical emotional and digestive rest all right remember Awake individual, very 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 important. When we are asleep, the 
amount of energy that is required to maintain the basic activities of life is actually low so what are the basic activities of life these condition like working of heart the heart beating the circulation the brain function respiration all of them requires energy okay all of them are atp driven all right so these are the condition for which we need some amount of energy when we are awake and this energy is fixed for all adults which is 24 kilo calorie per kg body weight per day all right so 24 is the fixed value for an healthy adult which is required to maintain all the basic body function now there are few factors on which this bmr will depend those are age sex exercise state whether patient is febrile or not whether temperature is high hyperthyroidism is again a cause of high bmr all right and what instrument is needed to measure bmr it is benedict roth apparatus mind it guys so you see in from now every video i'll be giving a code of the day which will which will let me know that you are not skipping this video and you have watching you are watching this video during the whole duration so code of the day today is b m r okay so this is the code of the day if you are watching this video please type b m r in the comment section now moving on the next term is sda what is specific dynamic action this refers to the increased heat production or metabolic rate following intake of food you all know that when after immediately food is taken the amount of energy expenditure in our body or heat production is highly increased this is referred to as sda all right why this happens this is due to the fact that energy is used for various other conditions for example digestion transport absorption all these factors determine how uh, the body will burn calories or heat all right however there are few activities which affects this sda i'll show you a chart see while eating the sda is 28 means the body has already started burning calories while you are eating as we go up to the to increase our level of strain this sda also increases to cope up with the need all right so you can see writing driving a car typing typewriting walking cycling running swimming so swimming is the highest form of exercise and activity listed in this chart there are other severe forms of exercise marathon running weight lifting cardio training intense training all those things so the point is when a person is just up from a swim and he consumes some food okay the rate at which those food will be metabolized are very 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 high all right so patients and cases or persons will be energy burning energy in so high fashion that if extra food is not supplemented following those activities the body will burn the stored energy sources so that's why it is not recommended to eat immediately following swimming or to eat immediately following exercise or to eat immediately after any strenuous work you will notice this your parents will always say that after you do some running just rest a while before you eat okay this is due to the fact that whatever you will be eating will be burnt away nothing will be stored okay so you get my point so moving on so what is the exact amount of physical activity for a healthy individual for sedentary desk job workers for you guys who are now sitting at home during this covid 19 lockdown it's 30 percent of the total basal, basal metabolic rate this amount of calorie you should be provided nutritionally okay for and also this also implies to this amount of calorie that you should be burning in exercise <laughs> okay for moderate work approximately 40 percent of bmr is burned okay so to maintain the balance that you should supplement yourself with 40 percent of your bmr and this will increase by 10 percent for heavy and strenuous work specifically for pregnancy the extra amount of energy required is 300 kilocalorie per day 
and that increases by 200 kilocalorie during lactation okay so those were the basic requirements now we move on to the importance of carbohydrates very 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 easy and known thing to you guys all right because they perform the they form the major chunk of your diet our diet but one of the most important aspect of carbohydrates are they provide dietary fiber all right so what are dietary fibers dietary fibers are nothing but insoluble part of the carbohydrate that are not easily digested in git so what does they do they actually remain undigested they act as osmotic uh, high osmotic pressure is created in the gut water is retained stool volume is uh, formed and constipation is relieved okay these are all the physical and mechanical action of dietary fiber however the medical medicinal action is also very important they prevent reabsorption of bile they lower serum cholesterol and they have been shown proven to reduce the rate of colon cancers as well as ulcerative colitis and many colon disorders the exact mechanism is yet to be explained in a textbook level but there are various journals which explain the role of various pro and anti inflammatory cytokines in this matter but for you guys you should know dietary fiber lowers cholesterol improves health improves colon cancer and prevents colon disorders all right so but one thing is important vegetarian dietary fiber natural dietary fibers are required for this purpose we have got artificial dietary fiber isabgol etc those are used as purgative just to increase the stool volume they will not help you in preventing colon disorders so only a diet that is rich in a lot of fruit and vegetable will help in this regard so you can see these are the various dietary fibers so chemically they are cellulose hemicellulose lignin and pectin so majority what does they do they increase bowel motion improve peristalsis retains water act as anti colina anti oxidant and anti cholesterol genic agent all right so they lower serum cholesterol you don't need to remember the function of each and every one of them just remember in general all right so you can see dietary fiber improves bowel motility prevents constipation decreases reabsorption of bile acid thus lowering the cholesterol level and improves glucose tolerance so as i told you the benefit effect is more when there are soluble dietary fibers in diet now uh, the importance of lipids now lipids provide a concentrated source of energy you all know the calorific value of lipid is highest it's 9.3 kilocalorie compared to proteins and carbohydrates whose calorific value are in the range of 4.5 to 4.8 now there are two parts of lipid two types of lipid in our diet one is ghee and oil and butter which we deliberately take and which is visible fat all right uh, and another type of fat is invisible fat the fat which is present in other forms of diet i mean eggs nuts cereals etc so you just need to remember what are the percentage of calories that are provided by those visible and invisible fat all right now one thing you need to know that saturated fat they raise serum cholesterol all right and unsaturated fat they lower serum cholesterol therefore lots of uh, tv ads since ages are promoting unsaturated fat vegetable oils all right because they are anti atherogenic they prevent cholesterol unsaturated fat they help in preventing they help in preventing heart diseases as well as stroke but saturated fatty acid they raise the serum cholesterol they help in atherosclerosis they are deadly in nature one thing you should know the trans fatty acid what are trans fatty acid uh, those fatty acid that have got trans double bonds all right they are bad all right they lower the helpful hdl they elevate ldl and trans fatty acids are actually present in dairy products and hydrogenated edible oil all right you know what happens uh, 
most of us we are very conscious we don't consume fast food we don't consume food from outside and we always uh, volunteer by for taking home cooked food why because in commercial areas what happens they use the same oil to recook food in that what happens constant hydrogenation converts all the cis to fatty acid to trans fatty acid and they are actually atherogenic so even at home if the kitchen practice is using the same oil to frying and recooking stuff it should be strongly prohibited okay this is absolutely harmful and soon may result in a catastrophic cardiovascular disorder moreover trans fatty acid also affect endothelial function they and aggravate insulin resistance and diabetes all right so remember trans fatty acids are bad and one should not use re and should not use the same oil to recook food so what's the recommended dietary intake of fat it's about 15 to 20 percent of the total calories and of them 25 to 30 percent should be pufa all right this will amount to the uh, approximate amount in gram depending on the total weight of the individual so it's good to remember by percentages now excess pufa is again harmful because it produces free radical and oxidative damage so the exact amount of saturated to mono and saturated to poly and saturated fatty acid in diet should be absolutely identical one is to one is to one and you should also note that the amount of cholesterol active cholesterol taken in diet should be less than 250 mg per day lastly we come to the importance of protein proteins are very important because they are the building blocks and they provide essential amino acids okay now what happens uh, total when enough carbohydrates are present in diet the amino acids are not used for yielding energy you understand my point this is known as the protein sparing effect of carbohydrate so which is bad okay we must cut down the amount of carbohydrate and give optimal amount of protein so that those amino acids are also used in case of normal balanced diet and normal nutrition process however when carbohydrate is depleted that is during starvation amino acid may act as energy sources so recommended dietary allowance of protein you should remember it's least in adult individual okay it's most in babies either when we are a baby or when individuals are going to produce and are producing a baby so during pregnancy lactation it is very high and children require more than that of adults so this is the easy value to remember just remember one value in case of adult and just remember one value in case of infant and pregnancy and lactation will be required more when you go, become senior and go to community medicine classes so this was all about the overview of nutrition so remember what are the terms that we learned today we learned calorific value we learned rq sda code of the day was basal metabolic rate bmr and importance of dietary fiber what are their nature what do they do and also importance of trans fatty acid and what are the rda of protein so feel free to get back to me with any queries in the whatsapp group and i will see you in the next one till then Bye.